What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Liron's Art and Creativity Show. And today I want to talk to you about how to find your artistic style. And we're going to talk about some basic principles, inspiration versus isolation. Okay, so these are kind of the three concepts I want to talk to you about. Um, so uh, let's get started. Uh, this is a topic that is really widely covered and I heard so much from so many people Um about how to go about doing that, how to achieve your own style, how to um, create maybe um, a unique and distinct way of doing things. And I'm going to skip all of the obvious tips that usually are covered, like practicing a lot, which is a valid advice, probably one of the most important ones. Um, And I want to, just like (laughs) I talked about artists uh, presenting things through their own filters, I want to present how I think about this through my own filter. Okay, so uh, first I'm going to start out by framing this entire episode uh, by saying that I don't necessarily think I already developed my own distinct, highly unique style. Um, If I look at my pen work, uh, pen and ink, then definitely I have. uh, I have a very distinct style of my own and I don't actually see a lot of artists that produce similar results. Um, I... I do like I have a heavy use of uh, cross hatching and my my lines are heavy in general um because I like to do buildings and things that have a lot of straight lines um and so this is really something I have been able to uh create with time now if I look at watercolor painting which is the thing I focus on the most these days I definitely don't do anything special um or something that that I not special, but something that I would consider uh, unique. You know, in pen and ink, I don't really need to do anything. I just kind of see what I want to sketch and sketch it out. I'm so well trained at it that I don't really have any problem with that. But with watercolor, I feel like I'm kind of an amalgam or a combination of other styles. Um, the only exception to that is portraits. With portraits, I feel like I can. Uh, summon things that are very distinct, very me. Um, I don't see a lot of people do the same thing and definitely not the exact same thing. Um, Now, I'm going to start by breaking down this kind of uh, notion of how to develop your own style uh, by talking about the basics, okay? Now, in any artistic field, there is what I like to call the basics. I talk about this quite a lot in my YouTube channel, going back to the basics, practicing the basics. Now, the cool thing about the basics is, as the name suggests, they are the basic skills you need to master in order to master a medium or a certain artistic endeavor. Okay, so for painting, that could be uh, the ability to match the value you see or the ability to... um, maybe even draw something in a competent way. Okay, so this is the basics. Now, the what's the relationship between the basics and finding your own style? Well, let me tell you this. Uh, the basics are detached of style, meaning it doesn't matter what style you work in. Uh, it doesn't matter what artist you look at. They are all adhering to the basics, okay? Because the basics are the skills that are more technical in some sense. So, for example, your ability to use the brush in a certain way or your uh, ability to... Um, I don't know, there's like millions of, of, of different ways of going about it. Uh, the ability for me in sketching to do the cross-hatching the way I do them. Uh, you know, in sculpting, there, there's going to be its own kind of uh, basics of that field. And so the basics are, and this is the magic part of this sentence, detached from any style. Therefore, working on the basics, I think, is the best anchor to master any skill. And it can be a bit tricky sometimes. You need to figure out what the basics are because the basics are a pure sense of your artistic field. And here's something interesting I noticed. Um, So let's say you've been uh, practicing your craft for a while alone, okay? And then suddenly you decide to start learning from a teacher, from someone who's maybe 20 times better than you, someone who mastered the field. Okay, or maybe even more than 20 times better than you. Uh, The first thing you'll notice, especially if you're learning from them personally, 
um, is that they go straight to the basics if they know what they're doing. This is something I noticed consistently happen with watercolor and with sketches. They immediately attack the very basic skills. And then what you discover is that, huh, I'm not that good at the basic skills. So no wonder I have a long way to go. Because uh, it is so easy to sometimes ignore them and go straight to the more complex stuff. When in fact you do need to uh, to work on the basics and improve them, okay? Um, and because they seem basic, it's easy to glance over them. With watercolor, like a, another classic example would be uh, just wash control. How you control the amount of water and paint that you have in the brush. And, and it really influences the way the paint handles on the paper. And so once you sort of am, are able to... Uh, master the levels of wetness from let's say 0 to a 10 when 0 is completely dry and 10 is soaking wet then you are at a much better position to be able to paint what you want because you know how to control the medium uh, but before you have complete mastery over that uh, your work is going to be very lacking and then when you start studying from someone who is a professional and who is a master maybe even of the craft you immediately notice that they go back to basics okay so that's one thing so for Figuring out what the basics are in your field and then attacking those on a daily basis. That's the first thing I want to talk about. And next up, I want to talk about the concept of inspiration and isolation. And the way I see it, uh, inspiration and isolation are two different periods that are circular, meaning you kind of alternate between them. This is definitely what happened to me. So inspiration is a time when you soak up knowledge. You study a lot of other artists. You look at paintings or sculptures or or plays or music by artists you appreciate and you try to figure out what the magic is behind them why do you like them so much what's so good about them why do other people like them you try and figure out what is the the magic behind someone else's art and maybe even do a studies uh, do a lot of studies of them and uh, of their art and um, try to flat out imitate it uh, and you learn a lot from that. You learn a lot of things. But then what happens is after doing that for a while, you are at a risk of becoming a copy of their style. And a copy is never as good as the original in this case. And uh, I see this a lot and I see this a lot in my own art uh, of me trying to develop something unique and I end up uh, imitating someone else's style. For example, the people, the figures that I plop into my paintings look really like Alvaro Castanet's uh, figures. Uh, when I just draw a figure all by itself I, and I focus on the basics once again, I get a figure to look really cool and really more of my style. But whenever I try to put them in a large scene, I accidentally do that. Um, and it's something I definitely want to get rid of. So this is one example. And I see this with many other people. And for me, the thing is, even if I produce uh, kind of a lame copy of someone else, I know it's just temporary. It's not what I strive for. But I see a lot of artists that are a bit oblivious to that fact and they are unaware of the fact that they're doing that. And this is a very dangerous trap um, that I think you want to avoid. Okay, so that's in terms of the inspiration. So what happens after you soaked up enough inspiration, you go into isolation mode. And isolation mode, at least what I did was, I completely detached myself from any other inspiration. I wasn't studying from tutorials. I wasn't looking at any other work. All I did was focusing on the basics, choosing simple objects uh, to paint, um, simple references to work on and then doing that without allowing any external inspiration or influence to come into my work. Um, at times this can be a little complex because you feel like you need this spurt of inspiration and, and that's, you know, it's it's legitimate, It's it can happen, but uh, I find that it is good to devote some time to that. Now, what I found that so far in my watercolor career, I really alternate between the two. So I go from... Um, from uh, inspiration, from an inspiration period to an uh, isolation period, back to an inspiration period, then back to isolation. Right now, I think I'm on the edge of another isolation period and then going back to inspiration. Um, but I can't really be sure about that, by the way. It takes some time and some perspective to really see where you were at. Uh, now, what about time frames? Meaning, uh, how long does each period take or should take? Um, so first off, there's no answer for that. Um, it can definitely change from one artist to another and just from different periods in your life and in your career. Uh, what I found to happen is that it moves some, anywhere between a month per period um, all the way up to maybe three to six months. 
Um, so there, there's kind of a shift every maybe three months on average. So uh, for three months, I really soak up a lot of knowledge from others. Then I feel like a poor imitation of them. Then I go back to doing my own thing. And, and then I feel really good about what I do. And then after a while, I become really bad again. So I think to myself, let's find another inspiration. Go get another inspiration, become a copy of them. And the cycle continues. But the um, main trajectory, the overarching trajectory is always upwards, always improving and always honing something that starts to look like a personal style. Okay, so... And it's really funny because if I go back to my very first paintings, very, very first, maybe for the first month or two, um, there's a lot more of me there than the ones that were maybe produced a year ago. And it's really tricky, you know, to to think about it that way. It's like you, I feel at least like I had something, I lost it and in order to gain a better or a higher level of it, in order to achieve a higher higher level of it. Uh, and so it's really tricky and it takes time. But um, yeah, this is basically everything I wanted to talk about. So let's conclude for a moment here. So basically, we were talking about how to find your own artistic style. Then we talked about the basics, the basic principles of your artistic endeavor, and how sticking to those can really help you develop your own style, because the basics are detached from any stylization. They are just that basic principles that are specific for each medium. Then we talked about isolation and inspiration, these two periods, and how alternating between the two in a circular manner can really help you um, improve your skills and develop your own style. So you basically take the good from other artists and then let go, let go of all of the rest and continue on with honing your own style, okay? And I find that this process really is helpful. So on a, on a regular basis, you keep focusing on the, on the basics and you simultaneously go through alterations between um, the the isolation periods and the inspiration periods. Um, so this is it. Uh, let's talk a bit about uh, today's artist corner. This is what I want to do next. And uh, today I want to recommend you check out Kandinsky's work. Okay, Vasily Kandinsky is a very well-known um, artist. He became uh, very influential in the abstract painting world. Um, he actually started... Um, uh, some of his uh, pieces I saw are ranging from uh, the the late 18th, 18s, so 1898 I saw, and, and then all the way to 1908 uh, and, and onward. So basically uh, between the 18s and the 19s. Um, and the thing is uh, with his work is that he started really in a more realistic direction and then with time worked on abstraction and developing uh, his own style that is really distinct. And the thing is, back at that time, uh, abstract painting wasn't really something big. It wasn't like today. Um, the more classic art used to be very realistic. Uh, and he's like one of the pioneers and he had a lot of influence on that area. So definitely check out his work. Um, I, th- I find it extremely fascinating because he did both, okay? Because I have some judgment towards people who do only abstract and, you know, maybe they just don't know how to do anything else. And of course, that's my own judgment. That says more about me than about them because they could very well be good in many other fields, but that's just like my dark side. But in any case, this one, this guy, he, he really, it's funny to say this guy about someone who like one of the old masters, not old masters, but a, a master of painting. Um, but in any case, he is just, he had it all. So uh, I would definitely recommend you check out, for example, uh, his painting called Odessa Port. This is from the 1898. Uh, and then later on, when he developed more of his abstract style, you have uh, Houses in Munich. That's from 1908. Okay, so about 10 years later, two very different styles um, and it's just amazing to see that kind of progression into a more abstract style that that is beautiful quite honestly um, and so this is it I really hope you enjoyed this episode uh, of my podcast I really appreciate your comments um, I haven't been looking at them enough and I will look at them more here on the website as well not just I mean on iTunes maybe you listen to this on iTunes maybe on my own website but I definitely will look more at the comments on my own website Um, thank you so much for all of the support Um, you're just amazing Uh, and I really can't wait to talk to you again in another episode really soon